Welcome to CivilNet. My guest via Skype from Istanbul is Professor Baskin Oran. He is a political scientist, a columnist. He was a very close friend of Harant Dink. He was one of the organizers of the Apology to the Armenians campaign, and very recently he was on the jury for the International Harant Dink Foundation Award Ceremonies. Uh, Professor Oran, thank you for joining us. Well, thank, thank you for calling me. I want to ask you, what did Harant Dink change during his life and after his death? Does society today, aside from the progressive uh, segment of society, the intellectuals, the NGO sector, d does society in Turkey know what Harant died for? Uh, if you permit me, I will start with a shocking sentence, Maria. The choice to kill Harant was a truly perfect choice. Okay. Let me explain why. That's because Hrant was the only person to reconcile Armenians and Turks after all this uh, calamity of 1915. He said to the Turks, you did awful things to us in 1915. You must accept this. And on the other hand, he said to the Armenians, you must get rid of your feelings of revenge. And that's why I think he was chosen to be killed so that he could not reconcile Armenians and the Turks. Uh, let me explain uh, briefly uh, the situation when Hrant made his entry to the Turkish scene in mid-1990s. Turkey was slowly getting rid of its Kurdish trauma uh, caused by the 19 military coup. Uh, things were beginning to turn normal. This civil society was growing it was it, it, because it was crushed by the military coup. Uh, and that's how Grant was able to talk thanks to the Turkish civil society uh, that supported, uh, supported him and his ideas. For instance, to give an example from myself, uh, I started to write in August, in, uh, uh, in the year uh, uh, following the opening of August, as the first uh, Muslim columnist. Therefore, Rant was a produce of the slow normalization of Turkey. On the other hand, he accelerated this trend tremendously, and so much so that he was killed because of this unbelievable acceleration. Now, uh, I want to come back to your question. Uh, what he was not able to complete during his life, uh, I want you to believe that he did it uh, after his tragic death. Grant is now a saint in Turkey, not among Ar Armenians only, among the Turks. Saints are everywhere in every country, incomparably more influential than living human beings. Now, how did this happen? Uh, I can cite three main reasons. One, his death was very tragic. And, mind you, his right shoe was ripped, as everybody saw uh, in his picture lying on the sidewalk. This influenced people very much. But you will say many deaths are tragic. Death by itself is tragic. Therefore, I will cite two more reasons. One, Grant, being an Armenian of Turkey, not an Armenian of diaspora, and an Armenian of Turkey, whose roots were in Anatolia, Malatya, 
was extremely balanced and realist. He understood on one side the difficulties of the Turks. Mind you, one century of education, quote and unquote, nationalist education, and he knew the psychological situation of the Armenians. Therefore, he did not insist, for instance, on the term genocide. He always said to the diaspora, what is more important for you? Turks accepting the word genocide or Turkey being democratic? This very question was very influential. He always preferred, uh, preferred, as we say in Anatolia, to eat the grape than beating, uh, than beating the grape cook. And secondly, Grant, for the same reason, for being an Anatolian Armenian of Turkey, was extremely sincere. That was his personality. This sincerity, every single Turkish citizen felt right away, even those who hated him, even the most nationalist Turks. That is why I believe his death has been so important to make the Turks accept the facts about the Ottoman Armenians. Professor Oran, uh, thank you for that fascinating uh, insight. Um, many Turks that uh, we meet uh, that come to Yerevan when we come to Istanbul, for them oftentimes they say life before Herant and life after Herant. There's no question that Herant Dink's death uh, changed a lot of things in Turkey. Uh, but is, can we say that it can be consistent? Uh, in other words, can you sustain that change in Turkey today to ensure that it does become a more democratic country? I neglected one important thing, Maria, the funerals of France. Hundreds and of thousands of Turks, Muslim Turks, were there to march after him. Now, uh, that made a great impact on the country. That, that proved that he was not alone at all. Uh, about your question, uh, is uh, the change that came after Hans that consistent? Is it going to continue towards a more democratic society in Turkey? My answer is yes, and I'm positive. Right now, Turkey is going through a very difficult era, and that's because of the authoritative personality of Erdogan. But, as I said, civil society is there to stay. Thanks to Hrant and his work, every single Turkish citizen, even the most nationalist ones, now know about the calamities of Metzier. The only thing is, many people, especially nationalist people in Turkey, are not ready to accept this calamity under the banner of genocide, because retrim because genocide means Nazis in Turkey. I am convinced that the uh, term Büyük Felaket, the translation into Turkish of Metzierm, uh, that we used in our 2008 campaign of apology to the Armenians, is an appropriate name uh, that we can offer to the Turks to describe the sufferings of our Armenian brothers and sisters. Turkey, believe me, is on the right path to understanding the Armenian tragedy, the Kurdish tragedy, the Syriac tragedy. Uh, it's right now in a difficult era, but that will pass. Civil society is born, and one of the fathers of 
this civil society is my friend France. Uh, Professor Oran, thank you very much. Uh, indeed, in the region, uh, democracy is sorely lacking. I know that from the viewpoint of Armenia, it's very important that we do have a stable democratic Turkey as a neighbor. Uh, and the fact that, uh, in your opinion, and in the opinion of many, many people, Hrant contributed uh, to that path towards democracy. Uh, so I do want to thank you for joining us. Uh, and for shedding some light uh, on, on the impact that one single Armenian man had uh, on the processes in Turkey. So thank you very much. Uh, I thank you, Maria, for giving me the opportunity to, to talk to my Armenian brothers and sisters in Armenia. This is very important for me. And I want to, uh, to take this opportunity to let uh, the Armenians of Armenia uh, know that uh, the, the memoirs of Manuel Kirkesharian, uh, the father of uh, Stepan Kirkesharian of Sydney, uh, that I published in 2005, uh, now are being made a documentary film for 2015 for the centenary. Uh, and we are right now working. Well, it's, all, it's, it's about keeping the channels of dialogue open uh, to come to some kind of mutual understanding. So, uh, once again, thank you, Professor Oran. Thank you. Mary. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest via Skype from Istanbul was Professor Baskin Oran, a political scientist, columnist, a very dear friend of Harant Dink. Stay with CivilNet. <laughs>